Hello everyone. It's 3.05 in the morning. Sunday. The day before the 26th. Going into the time that we've been thinking something's going to happen. And I'll tell you, we're lucky right now. I haven't seen... It's like a lull, actually, from what I've been seeing. We haven't had any off-the-chart earthquakes. Uh... Japan did have, uh, what was that, Roque? Um, but we just haven't seen anything uh, building up harsh, harsh, harsh and getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Seen a whole lot of 6.0s within the last couple of weeks, but other than that, uh, right now, unbelievably so, we've come through rather well until this point. And we'll just plot along and see what the rest holds for us. But right now we've had some sun activity. Sunspot AR1302 followed today's X2 flare. And we'll get back on that here in a minute. With an M7 flare nearly as strong, so far none of the blasts have been squarely earth directed. But this could change as the sunspot turns toward our planet in the days ahead. AR1302 is growing and shows no immediate signs of quieting down. Mm hmm. Sunspot 1302 has already produced two X flares, X.14 on September 22nd and X.1.9 on the 24th. Can another be far behind? Hmm. And they had that because Behemoth Sunspot 1302 unleashed another strong flare Saturday morning. An X. 1.9 category blast. Hmm. And then it says, coincidentally, Goddard Space Weather Lab says that it could, it could deliver a glancing blow to Earth's magnetic field on September 26th. And then this is their little graphs where you can see the Earth and the blast and how much of the planet will be getting hit by it you can kind of come and watch it and see what you think of it something to help you stay informed and another nice little thing I found you've probably seen maybe you didn't have the scientists found a faster than light particle? CERN Large Hadron Collider Particle Accelerator in Geneva. Article from Geneva. Startling find. One of the world's most foremost laboratories of the subatomic particle seemed to move faster than the speed of light. And they're rethinking Einstein and the foundation of physics. They're planning on putting the finding and Einstein to further test to see if a revolutionary shift in explaining the workings of the universe is needed or if they've made a mistake. They announced this discovery on Thursday and they're going to detail their findings on Friday which was a couple of days ago. If they're confirmed they won't change at all the way we live or the way the universe behaves after all these particles have presumably been speed demons for billions of years. But the findings will fundamentally change our understanding of how the world works. Hmm. This is so important many of the normal scientific rivalries fall by the wayside. Everybody is going to be looking at it every piece of information. Going faster than light is something that is just not supposed to happen according to Einstein's theory of relativity. We'd be thrilled if it's right because we love something that shakes the foundation of what we believe. That's what we live for. Hmm. 
readings have been so astounding researchers that they are inviting the broader physics community to look at what they've done and really scrutinize it in great detail. Hmm. CERN reported that a neutrino beam fired from a particle accelerator near Geneva, Geneva to a lab 454 miles away in Italy traveled 60 nanoseconds faster than the speed of light. Scientists calculated the margin of error at just 10 nanoseconds, making the difference statistically significant. Given the enormous implications of the find, they spent months checking and rechecking their results to make sure there were no flaws in the experiment. Hmm. The neutrino has almost no mass. It comes in three different quote-unquote flavors may have its own anti-particle and even has been seen shifting from one flavor to another while shooting out from the sun. Hmm. We'll have to see how that works out because they were looking for the God particle. And they got all kinds of things they can do with CERN here. So they may be on to something, we'll have to keep an eye on that. And I was talking about earthquakes earlier, and it just doesn't look like we're getting too much of a magnitude really anywhere, and that is good. You have a 4 on the 24th in central Alaska. Unless something has happened recently, it had looked pretty clear before I came on. A 5.0 on the 25th in Japan. A 4.5 in the Japan region on the 25th. Indonesia is really catching a break right now. They are really enjoying a quiet time. 4.2 south of Fiji on the 25th. 5.1 in the Fiji region on the 24th. And Australia, you look clear. Four point two on the twenty fourth in Macedonia. Everything looks pretty good up here. Well, not pretty good, but <clears throat> you're not getting pounded. That's what that means. Four point six on the twenty fourth in the North Atlantic Ocean. You have a 5 on the 25th near the coast of northern Peru. You have a 4.8 on the 24th in the West Chile Rise. Oh, yeah. How's that? <laughs> I thought it fell, didn't you? <laughs> it's still tracking it. It's still showing that they're tracking the satellite. So I don't know what to say about that. Hmm. Oh well, huh? Now, this is kind of freaky here. We're at the Atka Bay of the Niemeyer Station. And I'm going to click it one frame at a time and watch this, this light. I know you've seen uh, light like this before and somebody's already, always always said it's a camera it leaves a dot in the light. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. A lot of it probably is. I know there's all different brands of cameras you see the same thing in. 
But sometimes it just makes you gotta wonder like that. You don't see anything, do you? And then all of a sudden, you do. Ta-da! I click it forward once more. This seems to move right along with the brightness. And stay fairly proportioned to the position and size of the brightness. whether that's the camera or not it's very odd don't you think oh for some reason there was some blurred in there hmm there's a little something right there it might be some glare you can see a little stuff there more. And even if it's glare, it's some good big glare. Oh! <laughs> Look at the way that changed. See the snow's all darker. Ooh, what is that? There's none of that cloud stuff on this one. Hmm. Things look a little different, don't they? Well, that was certainly different. That was pretty much the highlight from there. So, I'm going to come over here. And this is me just taking some shots out in the yard. I was mowing my grass and I didn't really hear it and I wasn't paying attention. But apparently the plane was flying around and doing what he was told, hitting some chemtrails. It was a clear day. There wasn't any clouds in the sky for a long time. And they just came in slowly, and then there it is, the big screamer. Now, right here, I'm going to show you the sun and how far the sun has moved back to the north of west, or to the south of west, excuse me. And that's a nice little reflection in a hole. I could see some red and yellow and greenish color to that with my sunglasses on. Now see it's over that house. And when I used to stand in the same spot earlier this summer at that same time you couldn't see that. And Look at that chemtrail that chemtrail, they plowed it right in front of the of the sun. I hadn't seen them do one right in front of it. Not here. I hadn't seen them do one here right in front of it in a long time. And you can see it just goes, you know, way, way long. And I was concentrating on the yard work, so I wasn't really watching. And right over there, by that tree, well, back to the north of west is where it was going down at, at that same time earlier in the summer. But I haven't really seen anything other than the location of the sun and chemtrails and stuff as far as, other than they already abnormal, abnormal, normal stuff that we already know about.
So I'm just looking around at all of the clouds and everything and checking things out. I thought that was a real odd little pocket there, the way that was so colorful. But everything else in the cloud didn't really look the same. And this is another one. This would be from the 24th. I believe the other one that I just showed was from the 23rd. And that's another chemtrail. So they have been busy over here. A little more than normal. A little more than usual. Either that or I'm paying closer attention and seeing what they're doing. And that one stretched a long way too. And it was clear again and then all of a sudden we had a whole roll of clouds come in and just start blocking everything. I went out a little later on and I took some shots from a different angle and we'll play and look at that one after this is done. And that's from a different angle plowing through. And the clouds look kind of strange. Um, they look like they were in, today they did, they look like they were in rows. And they had a whole lot of, I caught it at sundown today, I had a whole lot of uh, color to them. <clears throat> they looked rather pinkish. Pinkish in color. A little bit of purpley to it. And it went from one horizon to the next. Well, let's go take a look at that. Oh, we don't want that. There we go. I check that out. I went to get some gas and a Coke. And I'm pointed uh, towards the west, and that's the south right there. That's kind of south, southwest angle. And I'm walking a little bit forward. And just kind of taking a shot of the color in the line and they look like they were road from that angle and now I'm just panning and I'm showing that whenever I go east it extended all the way to my left whenever I turned east pink in the cloud the reflection the whatever color process is making them that shade and then that is back over to the northwest so you see it just surrounded that's directly west and they look pinkish uh, I'm not going to be able to know what they look like to you in, when you watch the video but when I taped it they look more pinkish than anything right over to this to this area here the southwest area had a little bit of orangey-ish and some reddish but mainly it was pinkish so I wanted to show you the sky since that's really where we're looking now in the next few days Comet Elenin, or Spaceship Elenin, or Anunnaki Elenin, or 
dwarf Nibiru Elenin, or whatever Elenin turns out to be or not to be, we're going to answer some questions here in the next few days. But even more important than that, we're going to see if this is the year um, at the Feast of Trumpets that things get to kicking on. The meeting at the UN has taken place. Both sides have parlayed their thoughts. They made their press. The Palestinians did. And the Israelis made their pushback. And we'll have to see where it goes from here. But they didn't do an Obama and accept uh, a deal beforehand. They did make their play and they do want their their membership in the state. Now Netanyahu said that they were willing to deal. But only if certain guarantees for safety are uh, created. And that's a strange one in and of itself is... Uh, why do they not recognize a race of people's even right to exist and live? That speaks worlds in itself right there when you can't get the leadership of a people or a majority of the people to admit that a certain race of people does not have a right to live at all. So I'm not sure how they'll get around that. But I guess we're going to find out. So I wanted to bring everybody up to speed. And say we're looking pretty good right now, actually. Truly we are. Uh, we're not we're not having as much stuff as I anticipated we could have leading up to this and that is a really good thing and maybe the Lord has backed off the timeline just slightly we're just gonna have to find out and keep going keep living and going but no matter what happens he loves you and he wants to help you. That's all you got to do is call on him. And believe in him. And trust in him. And he'll defend you to the end. He'll always be there for you. And with that note, I'll let you all go. And say that I'm praying for you and holding you dear in my heart. And I hope God's blessing you. And I hope you keep looking up. Because I personally think this is not, not over. I think it's a good thing that it's been calm. But I just hope it's not the calm before the storm. And we're going to find out. God bless everyone. Goodbye.